this is starting to be like a dude podcast, but we're going to get nerdy. So this is a nerd uh, session. We're going to talk about HVAC. We have HVAC design uh, expert, Alex Meany. We have HVAC technician and employer, Dustin Cole from Cole Air. Thank you guys very much for being here. My pleasure. Uh, so what I would like to talk about is we've been talking a lot about new construction stuff and um, and ERVs and things like that. And we're going to kind of like back up for a second because I got some people asking real questions on the YouTube channel. Thank you. Please ask real questions and make real comments and like, you know, share your experiences. But they said, what happens if I want to keep different rooms in my home at different temperatures? How do we design for that? And how do we then install for that? And I, I like, that's not my style. I like I said it and forget it. Every room is exactly the same temperature. So like that's kind of outside my wheelhouse, which is why we have these gentlemen here. So uh, that, that exact question got asked of the author of the Manual J in my presence. And his answer was, oh, that's easy to calculate. I mean, you're never gonna do it, but it's easy to calculate <laughs> because it's a home, man. Like the, the last video you did with Dustin, what's the biggest duck in the house? the house, right? It's all connected. So yeah, you could design it for more airflow and it will probably maintain a slightly different temperature, but is it going to maintain exactly that temperature? No, there, it, the air is connected. The heat is connected. I don't have insulation between the two different temperatures. Like it, good luck. So let's, let's take, let's go to the first step and say that we're <laughs> insulating the interior walls, Okay. which I did not do in this house because I wanted every room to be the same temperature. Mm -hmm. So if we did that, and then I wanted to do with the, the crazy, no offense, but crazy things that people are talking about having their bedroom at a very cold temperature, like let's say 65 degrees. Mm -hmm. How does that impact like dew point when the dew point in Louisiana right. is going to be 74 to 78 degrees dew point of the outdoor air. And we, we like plan with fire at that point when we Absolutely. turn the temperature down to 65. Yeah. Uh, you, already in design, you walk a thin line in my state uh, on everything turning wet. Uh, I would tell them, don't do it. Uh, yeah. You know, that would just be a solid no. Um, however, and then once I leave, and then they can do whatever they want, but um, that's just dangerous. like our kids. Right, yeah. yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, it's That's dangerous. Yeah. Um, it's I'll say that there's a very smart guy who has been on this YouTube channel who is going to do that, and he's told me that he's going to do that, and, I, and there's nothing to do about it. And he is building with insulated concrete forms, and yeah, he's having interior start. walls start. being built with ICFs. And yeah. he's, I know he's going to build super airtight. So like, if you were going to do all that stuff, and we're now back to that conversation about new construction, you can do whatever you want because you could have everything be perfect, yep. then that's great. But for those of you who are living in existing homes and you want that 65 degrees at night, first thing that I'd say is don't turn it down to 65 at night and then let it go back up in the daytime. Just keep it there right. because the solid stuff is going to change the temperature. Um, I don't know. Do, do we disagree? No, I don't know that I disagree. No, yeah, no, yeah. I'd say keep it there and, yeah. and going back to it, knowing now that this is specifically in a, in a situation like that, you can do that. If you have control over all of your layers and, and you can maintain it, then have that and do whatever you want. Yeah. But just be careful and you have to test. Yep. You have to confirm. Otherwise, if there is any infiltration uh, that is not managed, it's it's well, going to turn into things that you don't want in your walls. And what, what climate is this very smart person in? Houston. Oh, okay. That's a bold move. Yeah. Very yeah. smart person. He's a bold, bold man. Move. He's a bold, bold man. Move. Yeah. Um, um, he's yeah, watching. It, it, just I, takes, it just takes one weak point yeah. for yeah. the water to start collecting and that water can go places. Yeah. Now, mold doesn't like styrofoam very much, so you know maybe that's safer. Hmm. But right. yeah, but there's plenty of other stuff. So this guy is not a problem. But for those of you who are like <laughs> also on that band wheel, I, apparently there's a lot of stuff about biohacking on YouTube about sleeping in 65 degrees. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. And so like just please be careful because it is a system and it interacts. So hey. surfer. So one thing, just real quick, it, I came to my attention in like learning how to do the sizing of the actual uh, equipment selection on the Mitsubishi side, mm -hmm. that um, there are certain lines within like for, and a, a brand like Mitsubishi, for example, where that you can do cooling down to really low temperatures outside. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a server room, if you're one of these IT guys that's working from home, which yep. a lot of guys are, yep. and you have this room that's gonna be overheated in all seasons, you can get equipment now that will air condition a space even when it's outside, it's 20 degrees. Mm -hmm. um, do we see that? Is that something that's important that comes up 
for you and when you're talking to clients? Not residentially. Okay. Uh, commercial, yes. Uh, absolutely. Uh, like commercial to large, it doesn't matter uh, because they have server rooms. There's mm -hmm. not a lot of that that goes in. Um, I can, I can see it becoming more of a conversation in the yeah. future uh, as more people are working from home. Uh, COVID changed the game. As Very it, much so. As it's such a small amount that I, I just don't focus on it. I, I don't think it's as bad as – now, every, every case is different. If they're going to run servers out of their house, then yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. They need it. Um, but they, they have equipment. We, but we were – making equipment work like that in the 90s easily with just a few controls and you can do it um, yeah also they have these uh things called windows yeah. if it's cold out Open and it. you want it to be cold <laughs> in you might try opening the window right. just, just pretty cool <laughs> crazy idea here right but that doesn't it's involve a, any design calculations right. alex it, it also <laughs> doesn't involve electricity yeah okay which by the way i when you have a hammer Every problem looks like a nail, right? Mm -hmm. You are an HVAC designer and you want it to be, you want, you want to biohack, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and so what are you gonna do? You're gonna, you're gonna size an air conditioning system to make it this temperature. So back when we didn't have air conditioning growing up, I think all of us at some point lived in a home that did not have air conditioning, it was considered a luxury mm -hmm. and it was hot and you had trouble sleeping. What did you do? Ice on my body. Ice everywhere. Okay, that's a, that's that's one way. To go. Yeah. That's one way to go. Yeah, is, yeah. What what did you do, Dustin? Take the blankets off. Yeah. Uh, Maybe turn on a fan. Yeah. So uh, if you want to get fan. into if you want to get into biohacking here, you are an exothermic uh, a, a body, right? And so your the body heat is going to come off of you, and that body heat is going to stay around you if air isn't circulating very well. You do not have to change the temperature to remove the heat from your body faster, okay? If you have a large air current moving over, you are actually cooler, right? Now, it has, the air has to be cooler. There is uh, over 95 degrees and high humidity fans aren't actually doing anything that can actually make it more harmful because they're blowing hotter temperatures on you more. Right. But if you can get the temperature down to 75 or 70, you put a fan on, guys, a fan, and the lived experience will be as if it's 65 degrees. And, but I know what you're thinking right now. Yeah, Those somebody, of you who are out there are like, wrong. but I want to <laughs> sleep with a blanket over me. Okay. And that's fine because it's is America right. and you could do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm like, okay, good. Let's, so let's talk about that. So if we wanted to have, what are the scenarios that you have seen where people want intentionally to have rooms different temperatures because that's just what they want? Yeah. I mean, it goes, well, you see why just as far as zoning a home? Or, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, for the most part, it's always wanting to control uh, main living space at one, one set temperature, either all the bedrooms at a specific other temperature, or in almost every case, they want to control just the master bedroom. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, we, we, they make zone controls, they make all kinds of fun stuff. They can do that. We can, we can supplement with a ductless unit in that room. That's how I would probably recommend them to do it. Um, instead of freezing out everywhere. Uh, and how would you design for that in Manual J software? Uh, you, you, can, you can break a building up into zones. Each of those zones uh, in most software, or at least in two software platforms that I, I'm familiar with, uh, each zone you can adjust the, the temperature, right? right. But um, there, first of all, the house you currently live in and the house you're building are not the same house. Right. What you need to do in your current house to be comfortable may not translate to it. The video you just did with Dustin talking about the zonal pressures in the bedroom. A lot of people like it cooler in their bedrooms because they wake up in the middle of the night and it's hot. Mm -hmm. And they're waking up in the middle of the night and it's it, it, hot because the thermostat's way out in the living room. It has no idea, the air conditioner has no idea it's getting hot because over there it's not hot. And you close the bedroom doors, you're putting the house under all kinds of negative pressure. You're increasing the infiltration. The latent load is going, well, sorry, latent load. The, the, the humidity is going up in the home. You're also reducing the airflow. And into the you're room. reducing the airflow into the room. So when it is coming on, you're getting less airflow than when the doors are open. And so maybe it is that maybe it's the case that you want it colder in your bedroom because if you don't start off colder, you end up uncomfortable and you don't have a good night's sleep. Mm -hmm. Right. But if you fix some of those underlying problems, there's there are a lot of situations where uh, someone will ask for a thing, right? And you could just give it to them. Mm -hmm. Or you could say, why do you want this thing? and figure out maybe what the problem is underneath 
that's causing you to want this thing that most people wouldn't want. And a lot of the times it's, I had a solution to this problem and it worked and I want you to do that. But what was the problem? Is the problem that it's not 65 degrees in my room or was the problem that I was making, waking up in the middle of the night because it got to be 80 degrees in my room mm-hmm. or it got to be 75 degrees in my room with a 70% relative humidity? I'm, I'm not saying we, you, you should never do this, but really think about some of the reasons you might want to do this and see if you having Dustin come in and check the zonal pressures and get the airflow better would actually solve the problem because it's a very high likelihood that it would. And I think that counseling, that being a doctor, like mm-hmm. a general protect, practitioner for your family and listening to the symptoms, but then not addressing the symptoms, addressing the underlying issue mm-hmm. is incredibly important. And by the way, just to ch- tell you how serious this can be, you might think, oh, maybe it's like a little bit pressurized or whatever. I have a friend named Owen in California who bought a DG8 manometer $600 thing fits in your pocket um, on my recommendation. Mm-hmm. He also bought a blower door for his own house because he's like very interested in finding out what's going on. But he did the zonal pressure test on his bedroom yeah. and it was 30 oh, yeah. Pascals. Nice. Yeah. Well yeah. then. Um, which I like laughed. <laughs> I laughed for five yeah. minutes that's, seeing um, that. Yeah, it was yeah. like, that's the most extreme reading I've ever seen. And, yep. he, and he was like, this might be a problem, so I'm gonna test oh. it. And it turns out like that's such a ridiculous problem that it's not even like. Owen, well, Owen has a tight house and like shag carpet. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's solving that problem in itself. Yeah. Oh yeah. So going back to uh, cooling, all right, so everybody wants it colder. Like, like your, your friend with the high performance home with the 65 degree bedroom, they want that because that's what they think they want. Whenever they get a piece of equipment in the home that is operating like that and you have a con- near continuous runtime, the air is constantly mixing. And so that air is blowing across you. You are, mm-hmm. you are constantly cooler than, uh, well, I say, don't blow air on people. Do not blow air on people. Ed would get mad. Yeah. Unless it's a fan uh, pointed yeah. at your yeah. body because you're sitting on top of yeah. the sheets. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but you don't like a maniac. Top, you don't have to be on top of the sheets, guys. Okay? Throw a sheet. Spread out. Eagle. I know we want the I know we want the weighted blanket, and that is a problem. But like a sheet will do just fine. Uh-huh. I'm serious, man. With with that constant air moving, constant conditioning, constant exchange, and not being impacted by mm-hmm. the door, uh, and then by not bringing the house negative, and and or causing excess exfiltration or whatever, what are all the problems that you're having? You'll find that every one of my customers that says, I want it 65, I want it 68, they don't. Yep. They actually want it, uh, you know, 75. They all want it 72. Everybody wants it 72 so, in yeah, their house. That's about right. um, And as far as the design point, I still want to design that room at 65. Because when are we in that room? We're in that room at night. What's the temperature outside? 80? Yep. But your design's 93? So, so if I design it at 75 mm-hmm. and at night, whenever you go to bed, you can have your cake. You can have it 65. You, people, because at night it's cooler than in the daytime. Right, yep. your capacity shift. And so all, a lot of people believe that they have to design for this specific temperature. Mm-hmm. Otherwise they won't be able to reach it. And that's just not true because in a manual J, it's calculating worst case design day. Are you cooking? Are you cleaning? Yeah. Is everybody doing jumping jacks? Right. <laughs> uh, you know, is everything happening? No. I mean, when was the last time that you washed clothes, all the lights were on, TVs are going, doors are open, and you're having a dance party while you're cooking? Yeah. On the hottest day of the year. On the hottest day yep. of the year. At five o'clock in the afternoon. Right. At, at that peak moment, it doesn't happen. You always have a reserve capacity. Yep. You always, always have a reserve capacity. Don't be scared that you sized it at 75. Uh, I recently worked with a contractor out of town and convinced him of that. Um, And he's changed his way and he's never looking back. He was so concerned about reaching that design, that Mm -hmm. 72, and what if I lost the ground? And then whenever he realized that, holy hell, we have like 3,000, 4,000 extra BTUs just laying around, Um, we're good. And by that continuous runtime, Mixed radiant temperature in the home, everything gets better. And, yep. that, and that, that is also why con- HVAC contractors should care a lot about the air tightness and the insulation right. layers yes. in the house. Yes. Because if they, that's wrong, then you could do whatever you want HVAC wise, and it's never gonna work. That's right. Yeah, yeah you, can, you cannot HVAC your way out of a bad house. Yep. It's yep. impossible. Yeah, I've got 20 degree air blowing on the back of my neck. There, right. is, there is no temperature I can make the air in the room make that comfortable. Right. Yeah.
Yeah. Absolutely. And when we're talking about the design temperature that we use, uh, contractors especially, these aren't the outdoor or indoor. These are not the temperatures at which your air conditioner stops working. Mm -hmm. That's not how it works. Thermal mass is a thing, right? Uh, if I own, uh, this used to be a problem back in the, nine, well, actually just back before Wi-Fi thermostats were a thing. Someone would show up to a vacation home, the air conditioner was off, they would turn it on, and it couldn't get cool until like Monday. And they might have, they, that, that, they left Monday, they left Sunday. And so they have a bad air conditioner. No, mm -hmm. they have an air conditioner that it takes all of that energy to bring that temperature down. Because you're not just bringing down the temperature of the air, they're bringing down the temperature of the floors and the furniture and the seat and everything in the house, right? The granite countertops that are super freaking heavy. You're bringing that temperature down and all of those things. And it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of time, mm -hmm. right? Well, the same thing will happen in reverse. If you've maintained 75 degrees in your house and the temperature goes up by one, degrees for, one degree outside for an hour, it's not gonna go up by one degree in the house. You have to heat everything in the house up to do that. So when we're choosing these design temperatures, this is not like, okay, after 93, it stops working. No, it, after 93, it might start to get warm. To and slip if you a had, bit yeah, until. Maybe, and you wouldn't even notice for hours. And when we talk about the 100 degree day, it's not 100 degrees for hours. It's 100 degrees for like two hours, and it was 99 for an hour, and it was 98 for, it's, it makes this little thingy here. So yeah, we're not picking the temperature at which you stop working, which is why, when you pick that design temperature, it's not the worst temperature of the year. Absolutely. Yeah, sorry. Lot to think about. <laughs> no, it's, it's, I'm, I'm, my brain is chewing. I hope that your brain is chewing. Thank you guys very much for going very deep. Yep. Nerd level 17 next time. Please make sure that you're subscribed to uh, follow that. Uh, comment below if you have things to add or questions to ask. Tune in next time.